Well, thanks, Ben, for that introduction, and thanks very much for inviting me to this uh, magnificent uh, conference. Now, 20 years ago, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Cold War came to a close, we were told that it was the end of history, the triumph of the free market, the emergence of a unipolar world, and most of all, the death of socialism, and in fact, any systemic alternative to neoliberal capitalism. And two decades on, all that looks pretty foolish, I would say, and I think four things in particular have changed that uh, out of all recognition. The first has been the war on terror and the United States' strategic defeat in its attempt to impose its will by force in the Middle East, Iraq, and more widely in the Muslim world. The second is the rise of China. The third was the 2008 crisis, economic crisis, which of course we're still in, and the discrediting of the neoliberal model that is growing out of that. And finally, and crucially, there has been the progressive tide in Latin America, which has begun to offer exactly the alternative we were told was no longer available. Now, all those four things, all those four things are connected. But crucial to this story is the fact that Latin America was first to experience the full force of neoliberalism, first under General Pinochet in Chile in the 1970s, and the first to revolt against neoliberalism after the 1998 financial crisis. And that started to bring to, uh, bring to power uh, a wave of change and a, a, a change of elites, uh, sweeping away of elites from political power, and brought a string of radical socialist and social democratic governments to office, from Ecuador to Brazil, Paraguay to Argentina, challenging the US domination and neoliberal orthodoxy, breaking down social and racial inequality, building independent regional integration, and taking back resources from corporate control. Now, for decades, of course, Latin America was mired in American-backed dictatorships, and socialist Cuba stood alone. Now, the transformation that has occurred is symbolized for me by the fate of Che Guevara's killer, Sergeant Mario Turan. Because on the 9th of October 1967, when Guevara faced a shaking Turan in the schoolhouse in La Higuera, Bolivia, and told him, shoot coward, you're only killing a man, it, was, it marked the defeat of the spread of the Cuban Revolution uh, in Latin America. But 40 years later, the blind, reviled Tehran had his sight restored by Cuban doctors, paid for by revolutionary Venezuela in the radicalized Bolivia of Evo Morales. And that was part of a program of one and a half million free eye operations carried out in 33 countries in Latin America, the Caribbean and Africa, courtesy of the Cuban and Bolivarian revolutions. And I think it's an emblem of the humanity of Fidel and Che's legacy, but also a symbol of the passing of the Cuban torch to a new generation of Latin American revolutionaries and progressives. Because the radical shift in Latin America has been multidimensional. First, there's been a social and class dimension that has seen in its cutting edge in Venezuela, a halving of po poverty, a massive increase in free health care and education, and an extension of public ownership and control, which is echoed across countries throughout the region. Second, there's been a democratic dimension in the constitutional transformation and the experiments in direct democracy in a string of countries across Latin America. Third, there's been the ethnic dimension, 
in the political awakening of the indigenous population, symbolized by the election of Evo Morales, an Aymara Indian in Bolivia. Fourth, there's been the regional dimension in the development of independent economic integration. And finally, the international dimension in the ejection of United States bases, such as the Manta Air Base in Ecuador, and the assertion of an independent foreign policy backed by almost all, including, crucially, Brazil. But most of all, the international impact of that for the rest of the world has been that Latin America has shown that there can be a systemic alternative, that 21st century socialism can be built, and that another world is not only possible, but is being created right here, right now. Now, of course, none of these advances are settled or irreversible. Some, of course, are more radical than others. There are multiple internal weaknesses and challenges in all the countries that we're talking about here today. And the process of change and social advance is threatened from within and without. During this whole period, of course, the United States has been distracted fighting the war on terror. And, but now, even under uh, the presidency of Barack Obama, the United States foreign policy establishment has made clear that it remains committed to rollback, building new bases in the death squad state of Colombia, potentially to intervene again across the region. Now, we've seen evidence of that, as we've already heard this morning, in the coup in Honduras. Uh, despite Obama's promise that it risked a terrible precedent if that was allowed uh, to stand, and it's happened courtesy of US support, or as uh, Hillary Clinton put it, the process has been managed to a su successful conclusion. And as we saw in the WikiLeaks this week, the United States Embassy itself recognized that to be a coup and an entirely illegal action despite the public US effective support. And it was a signal that the democratic and radical tide can be turned back and was followed, of course, by this year's failed coup attempt against Rafael Correa in Ecuador. Uh, and it doubtless won't be the last. So that's one reason why Latin, the Latin American left needs international support and solidarity. There needs to be pressure on the British government and the European Union to oppose the anti-democratic back backlash or foreign intervention against a movement of change which any decent person should support. And finally, to demand that the media reports fairly on what is taking place, which is of significance to everyone throughout the world. But we also need to learn from what's taking place in Latin America for ourselves. Latin American societies are very different from here, and they, have, they face different problems in many ways. But the common sense that Latin America has shown about the bankruptcy of neoliberal capitalism that, uh, that was first recognized on the, on the continent of South America is something, an understanding that has now gone global. There are very direct lessons now for countries like Ireland and Greece from, for example, what happened in Argentina in the early years of this last decade. And finally, there's a wider question for us, is, which is whether some of the radical and socialist action and change that has been delivered in Latin America can be generated here too in this society, in this part of the world. Thanks very much.